Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a challenge where I'm only going to be using five colored pencils to create a whole portrait. And this was a really fun challenge to do and I thought it'd be a good one to talk you guys through about how I approached it so that you can try it yourself as I really think it will help you improve your colored pencil skills by tackling a restricted color palette. So let's get straight into it. I wanted to only use five colors, so it was very important that I picked the right colors. And these are the ones that I picked. I made sure that I had a black pencil to get the really dark values and tones in, especially because the reference that I was using, she had like eyeliner and stuff on, so I wanted to make sure I could get in those really dark values. I also used a yellow for the lightest base color. I kind of approached it as I would do my watercolor skin tones where I would use a yellow, a red, and a brown. So I thought I'd apply that knowledge and pick those three colors to make my skin tones. So a yellow, a red, and a lighter brown. And then because her eyes were blue, I also picked a light blue as well. But those really are gonna be the colors, the only colors that I'm gonna use for this whole study. The paper that I'm using is the Bristol Smooth Surface Paper by Strathmore and this is the paper that I usually use for all of my colour pencil portraits. It's a really good quality paper, I'm using the 300 series which is the cheapest and it's still a really good quality. So I started out like normal by doing a sketch outline with a graphite pencil and then using a kneaded eraser to lift up that sketch outline so that the graphite didn't peek through any of our coloured pencil shading. I always like to do this step first before adding any coloured pencil. And then I wanted to go in first and use the yellow to start building up a base layer on the hair. I normally approach portraits starting with the eyes first, but I really fancied for some reason doing the hair first. I think it's because I had a really clear vision on the steps that I wanted to take and how I wanted to tackle doing the hair with this really restricted color palette. And I was definitely really excited to give this challenge a go. So I simply went over the majority of the hair using this yellow pencil, focusing on going with the direction of each section of hair. So you can see that I'm building up the shading using lines that are going with the direction the hair is going in. And like I said, I pretty much added this all over the hair, apart from the brightest highlights that I could see in the reference image. And I was feeling really confident at this point that I could make this hair look quite realistic. I went back in with the yellow to do another layer and I just applied a bit more pressure to try and add in some shadows to add a bit of variety. And I was very much aware that by only using five colors, it was really important to focus on getting my values right. So it doesn't matter if you don't have hundreds of colors and you're not using all of the colors that you need to make it accurate color to the reference image. All that matters is that you get the same values as is in the reference image. That's so important because if you think about it, you can just use black and white like charcoal pencils and get a really realistic looking drawing just by getting the values correct. So instead of focusing on colors, I really placed a lot of focus on values and contrast. Now you can see that I'm building up another layer of shading. I'm going darker by going in with that brown pencil. And it's really important that you do build it up in layers and don't apply too much pressure at your in your starting layers because you do need to build up a lot of layers. And if you go in too heavy with the color pencils early on, it'll be hard for the paper to take lots more layers on top. So I made sure to keep a really light hand throughout until I got to the final layers. And I'm just adding this brown everywhere that's darker in the reference than that first yellow base color. And you can see that already this is starting to give more of a realistic look to the hair. Again, I'm just going in lines that are going with the direction each section of hair is going in. And I'm making sure to leave certain areas free of this brown color to give a natural looking highlight. Another thing to mention is that I wanted to add even more of a challenge into this piece by not using any blending tools either. So I didn't use solvent or a blending stick or anything like that. I was just using the layering of the pencils to create natural blending. 
Now you can see that I'm going in with the black and I'm using this to create the darkest shadows that I can see in the reference image and there were some really dark shadows where the hair is meeting the side of the face so I really wanted to make sure that I got those shadows really dark and dramatic to make the drawing pop. It really is all about contrast. Contrast is so important when it comes to making a drawing look realistic. And I think people underestimate how much contrast plays a big part in a realistic outcome to your drawing. So it is going to look very unnatural at the moment. It's going to look very strange because you're adding a black on top of light yellow colors. It's gonna look weird, but it's okay. I plan to build up more browns on top of the black to give it more of a natural look and build up more shadows. But I wanted to go in with the black just to establish where those darkest shadows were. Now I'm going back in with that brown that we just used and I'm going over that black with a bit more pressure to really make the brown stand out and I'm also using it to create those mid-tone values so that we're integrating those really dark black shadows into the really light yellow base layer colour because we don't want there to be a harsh transition there. Also, it's super important that you keep your pencil sharp at all times, especially when you're doing hair where you want your lines to be really crisp. So make sure that you do keep checking your pencils to see if they need sharpening. So I did find that there was quite a few challenges with this challenge. So I found that the actual techniques were the same because I'm using the same quality pencils, but there were colors that I needed. Like for example, normally I wouldn't have used black. I would only use black if I really, really had to. If there was areas that were black, like mascara on eyelashes or black eyeliner, black makeup, stuff like that. But normally I try to leave the colors as natural as possible. I try to avoid using black and in this case, it just I just didn't have that luxury really. Now I'm going in with the yellow and I just wanted to add a bit more vibrancy to the hair. So I am going to use one of my tools that I normally use for colour pencil drawings just to add a bit more detail to the hair. So this is an X-Acto knife. I've done many, many videos talking about this before and showing you guys how to use it. And I've also got a blog post where I go through how to use it. I will link my art blog in the description of this video so that you can check out all of my blogs if you prefer to see things written out. But I just use that to scrape away some of the colour pencil to create some details. And I'm also using the Tombow Mono Eraser, which is a stick eraser to create a few more highlights as well. And this is better for lifting up bigger, thicker highlights, whereas the X-Acto knife is great for fine details. Now before we move on to drawing the skin, if you want to follow along with this drawing in real time and do the challenge yourself, as well as follow along with over 300 real time tutorials, then they are all available with all the resources you need over on my Patreon for a small amount per month. However, if a monthly membership isn't right for you or you're just interested in focusing on one medium, then over on my website, I've got lots of individual courses to help you improve your drawing or painting skills. I've got lots on there for colored pencils, whether you wanna focus on portraits and colored pencil or drawing animals. I've got lots of courses that you can check out on there for just a one-off payment. You'll get access to them for as long as you need and you can re-watch the tutorials as much as you want. You will also get access to all of the resources that you need so that you can really follow along with the tutorials and improve and build confidence with these skills. If you are interested in my courses, you can get 15% off if you use the code SAVE15 at checkout. I'll leave a link to my Patreon and my course website in the description below, but let's get back into the drawing. Once again, when I was starting drawing the skin, I wanted to make sure that the graphite wouldn't show through any of the areas, especially the lighter areas, for example, around the nose, where I knew I was going to be doing really light shading. So I used that kneaded eraser to lighten up all of the graphite. Now I'm going back in with that yellow pencil, making sure that it was really sharpened so that I could get nice, even shading. And I simply start off by adding a base layer all over the skin. So I tried to come up with a little plan in my head of how I wanted to approach the skin. And I thought a base layer of yellow would be really good. And I made sure not to press hard at all. I just want a light layer of the yellow so that it looks a bit more creamy. I don't want it to be bright yellow. 
So it was so important that I was really light handed when I was doing this. And a little tip for you guys, if you do want to create really light, even shading, I recommend holding the pencil further back and holding the pencil on the side so less of the pigment gets down onto the paper and holding it further back means that you have more control. I then decided to go in with the red and build up those pink flesh tones and I felt that mixing the yellow and the pink together for the skin created a really nice combination and a really natural looking skin tone. Of course it's not going to be as good as it would be if you had loads of colours, you know, I was never expecting this to be my best portrait ever. It was more just to see what I could do and have fun really, don't expect it to be perfect or your best creation because with five pencils you are very limited with what you could do and the realism that you could get but it is very fun to problem solve and to see what you can do with this sort of scenario. I use the pink, well this red tone, to very much create the shading and the shadows that I can see in the face and create the contours. So you can see that I used it a lot around the nose and the tip of the nose and a lot on the cheeks as well. In the reference there was a blush tone on her cheeks so I thought the red would create a really nice healthy glow to the skin and mix with the yellow nicely so that it didn't look too sickly yellow at all. I then decided to go in with the brown and the brown's really to deepen up the shadows and give us that darker colour. If I was to go back and do something different, I would have picked a different shade of brown. I feel like this one was very yellow and I'd have picked a darker one so that I'd have had a bit more versatility there because it didn't get very dark straight away and even applying more pressure it wouldn't go very dark so I did have to go in quite a bit with the black to really darken things up but on the skin that's not going to work out too well mixing in too much black it will look really grey and horrible so if I was to go back I would have done a bit more testing with the browns I didn't have many browns to choose from I always feel like I run out of the browns really quickly and I always go to find browns and I never have any so I just had to make do with what I had and this was the raw umber and it was just a bit too yellowy and golden toned and vibrant for me I would have used something a bit more neutral but it did get the job done well and I still think I was able to get quite a realistic look with this drawing and I was really pleased with how it turned out especially considering I didn't use any blending tools and I used the Faber-Castell polychromos which have a harder lead then Prismacolors or Caran d'Ache and I normally use Prismacolors or Caran d'Ache for my portraits. I never use polychromos so I had a lot of new experiences with this particular portrait. Also I'm very used to using a white pencil with my drawings as well. I often use a creamy white pencil to blend out the shading and to give a really smooth finish but I did not have this luxury with this particular portrait so things were a little more grainy and I didn't have that, that sort of safe pencil to go in and blend and smooth things out. So yeah lots of obstacles but I definitely recommend trying this out for yourself. So now I'm going in with the black and actually I did use a Crayola black for this so I'm using a very cheap black, I didn't have any other black pencils so you really can use whatever colour pencils for this challenge that you have, you can use all Crayola pencils if you want, you don't have to use expensive supplies to get started with colour pencils, a simple pack of Crayolas will do just fine. I actually have a video where I created an owl drawing using Crayolas and I was able to get a really professional look to my drawing just using Crayolas. Actually I think I did use one white pencil so I cheated a little bit but it was pretty much all with Crayolas so I recommend checking that out. You really don't need expensive supplies to get started with coloured pencils. You can see that I'm using the black to create a lot of the dark shading, especially around the eyes and I'm starting to block in the features of the face using the black like the pupil, around the iris and the nostrils and I feel like doing this stage really helped to pull everything together, especially doing the black shading around the side of the eye, I feel like that made a big difference. I'm going in with the blue now and using that to fill in the iris on both of the eyes. Normally I'd have used a lot more blues and some greys in there to make it look a bit more realistic but for this I just used the blue and then a bit of black to add in some darker shading. 
And then for any highlights that I wanted to add in, I just used the eraser to pull up some of that colored pencil. Because like I said, I didn't have a white pencil on hand for this. So now I'm going back in with the black, I'm adding little eyelashes, details in the eyes. We've still got to do the mouth and the ear, but we've finished the skin and I was really happy with how the skin looks. Now I'm going in and I'm blocking in the darkest areas of the mouth and I used the black to create the shading on the lips and I really feel like the mouth was the hardest part to do because the brown was too yellow for the lips. She had really bright red lipstick on so the yellow using like the brownish yellow for the shadows wouldn't have given the right sort of colour so I just did a black light shading under base and then added the red on top and I feel like that got me the best possible result that I could have gotten. I then went back in with the black and I darkened up around the teeth and I used the black and the yellow a little bit to create the shading on the teeth to make it look a bit more natural so they weren't so bright because in reality teeth aren't bright white they have got a lot of shading to them. And I'm just finishing off with the ear but I definitely had fun giving this a go and I was really surprised with the final outcome it turned out a lot better than I thought it would I would love it if you would give this a try and remember you can tag me on Instagram with your final results from this challenge and I'd love to see what you guys create my Instagram is at Kirsty's art follow me on there and tag me in your work whatever you follow from any of my tutorials I'd love to see what you guys create I love seeing the work that you post on there but here you can see the final result. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.